it almost feels like it suits Gareth Southgate a little bit in the sense of coming up against the Spanish, you're not going to get everybody going, why haven't we got more of the ball? Why aren't we creating chance after chance? There's going to be a kind of acceptance that it isn't all going to be one-way traffic. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We are in Berlin. We've made it to the host city of the Euro 2024 final. England will take on Spain here on Sunday. We'll be there. I'm with Scott Saunders and I'm with Quinton from 90 Min France. Really, really looking forward to this one on Sunday. Guys, we've got to start though by looking back on the semi-finals. Um, England making it through in the end. Scott, it was probably their best performance, right, of the tournament so far. We've had some time to reflect now. They do say that the best or the teams that win tournaments often warm up into tournaments. And England have been slowly getting better and better. I can't believe I'm saying this is painful. Man. <laughs> <laughs> but they have been getting better and better. Uh, and that first half performance especially uh, the other night was really good. And then when you have the kind of ammunition that you can bring off the bench, Ollie Watkins one of your favourites uh, coming on and scoring and a, a memorable goal. It's, that'll go down in history for England fans. Uh, they have a lot of ammunition to bring off the bench. They have a really deep squad. A lot of them we haven't really seen yet, uh, but they are warming up. Gareth Southgate's managed to turn the tide a little bit in terms of like the fans. I'm even seeing people say, give him whatever he wants, knight him. I'm sure we'll talk about that in another video as well. But yeah, England have been, uh, they deserve, deserve finalists. Maybe, maybe. I would say that they've been a slow burner in this tournament. Yeah. The first few performances for England were nowhere near the level that we expect from the players. I think England as a team have turned in those types of performances for many, many years. But actually, it's the group of players that you look at, isn't it? And you think, well, with that talent, with that ability, they should be doing more. But in tournament football, it doesn't really matter. Quinton, your man, Ollie Watkins. Quinton's an Aston Villa fan, for those that don't know. As a Frenchman, you definitely wouldn't have enjoyed England qualifying for the final, but did the fact it was Watkins sweeten it a little bit? Absolutely. Um, I was buzzing for him because all season long he's been a bit criticised because he was not good enough for the England squad for some. Uh, some wanted Solanke to be there, some wanted uh, Tony to be the second striker. And we all knew how capable he was to come in in this kind of games and put in that kind of performance. Um, just being able to score at any point from any kind of distance, uh, any kind of angle as well. Um, I I'm buzzing for him. It's, it's so much deserved, so well deserved. Yeah, Harry, I mean, just to, on, to give credit to, to Southgate for a second, you know, we haven't really seen much of Ollie Watkins. I saw, I saw a video of his mum the other day saying, <laughs> Hopefully they bring on my son. I don't think she used those exact words <laughs> in the Please. semi-final. <laughs> but, you know, we've not really seen much of Ollie Watkins. Southgate has gone to Ivan Tony if he wants a bit of a change up front. We've seen him be brave enough to take off Harry Kane, uh, which I was surprised when it happened, you know, because he hadn't really showed that he was willing to do that in such a high-pressure situation before. Uh, but to bring on Watkins and have the... Are we giving him tactical credit here? Yeah. You know, like to we give him... To. He's a completely different type of player, Ollie Watkins, to what Ivan Tony is, to what Harry Kane is. And I think you recognise that in that second half, the Netherlands really tightened up a bit. Koeman made changes to shore up the game. The Dutch got a bit more control. And then Southgate thought, no, nah, I need a threat in behind. So he brings on a couple of players, Ollie Watkins, Cole Palmer, and they both end up combining for the goal. And, you know, he's really using his squad well. And he's just, Ollie Watkins has had the best moment of his life up until and maybe he scores in the final on Sunday and that'll, that'll usurp it. But that, you'll always have that moment. And now confidence is built. So Southgate has confidence in Watkins that he can maybe do that again and bring him on as a different option if the game kind of moves that way. Uh, but he's also got, he's got loads, in the, loads on the bench, loads of ammunition to use, like I've been saying. And, uh, you know, that's, I, I think England the favourites. That's Personally. why I find the, the squad selection so fascinating when it comes to these tournaments, because it's not necessarily about having the best 26 players. It's about having different options. And you're right to highlight that because Ivan Tony has been the second striker coming on and impacting games. You know, he has done that. And then to recognise in that particular game that Watkins was the answer, not Tony, it shows that Gareth Southgate really does trust in everybody that he's brought along 
um, to this tournament and, and it's a credit to him. Um, look, we, we talked a little bit about England's victory over the Netherlands on the previous video. We reacted to it from inside the Signal Iduna Park. You can check that video out. It is the last one on the channel. We're going to preview the final a little bit here as well. How but did you get a ticket to the final? Yeah, th that, that was my favourite <laughs> comment. How did you get a ticket? Uh, we're all going to be at the final, which we're absolutely buzzing about. Can't wait for that. Um, England against Spain. Look, for me, Spain have been the best team at these finals so far. But we know that tournament football doesn't always work like that. You watch them up close yeah. against the French. Before we talk about what went wrong for France, because that could be quite a lengthy segment, how good is Spain? How good is Lamine Mal? They, they are a brilliant side. Uh, they have shown all tournament long that they are something different this, this season. Um, they won six games out of six, which is incredible. They've been some great teams as well. You know, Italy, the holders, yeah, yeah, yeah. Germany, the hosts, France, the favourites. And now, you know. Yeah, they were, well. they were in the group Standing of death away. with uh, Croatia as well yeah. that we didn't even mention. Um, that shows the character of this team. That shows everything that changed in the mentality of the players uh, as soon as um, De La Fuente arrived as a head coach. Um, he, he brought something different to that squad. He managed to get the best out of every single player he has. And the best example, according to me, is Fabian Ruiz because watching PSG on a regular basis, it's not the same player with uh, with Spain. Um, it's been brilliant on tournament long, and Spain are basically the best team in the tournament, and that that's crazy to them. They're they're they are in the final. I think you're right to point out Fabian Ruiz because he's been incredible throughout. Um, and, you know, a lot of the talk around Spain has always been about the two wide men, yeah. Williams and Yamal, great players in their own right, young players, obviously still on a bit of a journey. But Fabian Ruiz has been superb, as you say. Let's talk a little bit about France, because going into the tournament, I wasn't expecting swashbuckling football. I wasn't expecting unreal performances, but I was expecting a really efficient side. That's what Didier Deschamps has shown us he can produce over the years there's so much talent in that group but it didn't really click for them did it and a bit like England throughout the tournament people were saying well it's going to click at some point only it didn't and they came up against the Spanish who seem to pack a punch these days and France fell short you know that's quite funny because in my opinion the performance they put against Spain is one of the best performances they had in the tournament and yet it's not good enough because that's why results are most important, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what we've and, been saying. and I think Deschamps knows it more than uh, any, anyone else because his method has always been to be efficient in front of the goal, has always been to be the most um, disciplined team tactically. And yet, you see the results. They, they haven't been uh, at the top level of this uh, tournament. They haven't been at the top level for 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes uh, against Spain. That's where they lost the game. We live in a day and age where somebody has to be the scapegoat. Somebody has to take the blame. Feels like Kylian Mbappe's had a little bit of that yeah, in the aftermath of France's exit. Is that fair? Yeah, absolutely. Everyone in France is, uh, is putting uh, Mbappe as the, the scapegoat. Um, that, that's fair because before, before the tournament, he said he wanted to create history. He said he, he wanted to win that tournament. He wanted to be the best player of his France squad. That's only fair to say that it's, it's not been the case. So, um, and even after the, the game, when, uh, when we went to the mix zone, he, he admitted that. He said, I wanted to win the tournament. I wanted to be the best player. I've done neither uh, of them. So, What are the reasons, though, behind why he didn't deliver? Obviously, we know he had the injury. Yeah, the, the, the nose issue was, um, was uh, the, the, the biggest problem. Of, that's a big, uh, of that's a big deal to be yeah, fair to him. Yeah, like, 100%. To have your nose broken and have to wear a mask. And I think yeah. he's spoken, hasn't he, about not seeing as well. And how can you have not peripheral... Not even sleep. Yeah, I mean, you know? how, how can you have peripheral vision yeah. that you need on a football pitch when you're wearing a mask? And, and the reason why he removed it for the last game, he explained it after the game as well. He said, I couldn't see well. I was not uh, happy and confident in my game because of the mask, so I removed it. And it's probably his best performance, even if it was not great, uh, it's probably his best uh, performance in the tournament in the semi-final. Um, but it's not it's not really a surprise because the last six months uh, he had with uh, with PSG were not great at all. Um, he's lost a bit of this. 
uh, ability to bring verticality in the game because of his, his pace, because of his ability to, to, to show some skills in the last third. And um, yeah, he, he was not at the top of his game. I think he was a bit tired because of the number of games he has played in the last two or three seasons. Um, and yeah, he, I think mentally he switched off a bit because of the Real Madrid move as well. Yeah, can I just ask as well, I didn't really, well, we didn't see much of Olivier Giroud. I've always thought Mbappe was at his best for France when he was there to play off Olivier Giroud. Obviously he's getting on a bit, Yeah. Um, but we did see him towards the end of the Spain game, didn't we? Yeah. But it, it didn't seem he didn't seem to have the same dynamic up front with Colomuani up there or, or Turam up there. No, well, absolutely. Why, why didn't he go with Giroud? So or basically what? before the tournament, uh, Didier Deschamps said he had an injury. And also Didier Deschamps mentioned that he was not happy with uh, the way Giroud was performing. Um, I mean, at at least it's the report saying that Deschamps said that to his uh, uh, his people, and he was not happy with uh, the way Didier, uh, Olivier Giroud was uh, was training. He was not happy with uh, the intensity he has put with the team, and uh, and he was not really confident in Olivier Giroud, and he preferred to play uh, Turam and Colomani instead of uh, Giroud. I thought that was a big problem for France. Yeah, I, I agree. felt like, the, as you said, Scott, the dynamic up front wasn't quite right. It's, again, we said it a million times, it's not always about picking the best individuals. It's about finding the partnerships. It's something that it's taken Gareth Southgate some time to do at this tournament. He sort of tweaked the system and formation a little bit to try and get more out of certain players. And I felt it took too long for Didier Deschamps to do that in this tournament. And unfortunately... France are going home as a result. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and there's also man, uh, one player that we didn't mention is Antoine Griezmann. Um, he's the first man that uh, Didier Deschamps puts on the on the team sheet. And this tournament, he was not there at all. Um, his first few performances were not really good. Um, and at the end of the tournament, he basically was on the bench. Um, so that was one of the biggest issues of France is that none of the three basis men uh, from the system, Olivier Giroud, Kylian Mbappé and Antoine Griezmann did not perform and you see the results. Scott, let's turn our attention to the final then. 9pm uh, kickoff here on Sunday. It's going to be a late night, I think. The celebrations probably will go on. Probably it's not as late as the other night. Yeah, yeah on, probably man. not. Uh, <laughs> once again, for those of you that are wondering, we ended up sitting on the floor of a, of a German railway uh, train and got home at some ridiculous time in the morning. Like 4 a.m. It's a, only my first one, but you've had a few of those. Oh, yeah, so far. we've had a few. Look, German efficiency is is a thing, but not when it comes to the rail. We'll, we'll put it that way. Um, Scott, this is a very different challenge for England. They're going to come up against the side that want to be on the front foot, that are much braver in possession, I would argue, than anything they faced in this competition so far. I think the Dutch gave them a bit more of a challenge in that sense but this is a game that you feel like England are probably going to have to sit off quite a bit in and maybe won't have suit. a possession will it suit them? I think it might to be honest um, what we've seen with England in most of these games so far is they're coming up against teams that are inferior to them so you're seeing these teams sit in wait a minute are you suggesting they've had an easy run to the final? I'm not, well I, I, let, let's just say the draw, has opened up, the draw has opened up for them, so maybe that's worked in Gareth, to Gareth Southgate's advantage. And I think most England fans will probably admit that as well. But obviously now, they're facing up against a team that are uh, unquestionably, unquestionably, they've been the best team in the competition. And but you know it might suit them. So in terms of space that they could be able to exploit, it's, it's, in terms of getting the ball, they'll have to do that. But in terms of space they can exploit, they might have more joy in getting at Spain. But what Spain do have is the ability to, you know, they've got two really, really potent wingers. Uh, I'm sure we'll talk about Lamine Yamal because you got to see him in the flesh the other day. It, it seems like these stars of tournaments are getting younger and younger. We talk, we talk about Mbappe at like World Cup 20, 2018 when he was like 18 or whatever it was. Now, Yamal 17. is six, 17, 16, you know. Uh, these players are just getting younger and younger and better and better, it seems. Uh, but he's shown that he's not afraid of the moment. On England side, Kobe Mainu, there's Jude Bellingham, Saka, all these players are, have shown that they're not afraid of these moments. But what what Spain have is a really, really well old functioning team. And we've seen them play the best football at the tournament. We've seen them beat teams like Germany, like France, like Italy, who have that kind of tournament experience over the last few years. And it's, 
and good form as well in Germany's case over the over the last year. And that's why I picked them to win the tournament. I thought Germany would win it, but Spain have been amazing. Uh, but in terms of England's job, I think this might end up being, I know it's a final, I don't want to jinx it, but this might end up being an actual really good game because you've got two teams that are, like England probably can play to their strengths and Spain will play to their strengths. So you might see a good mix. It almost feels like it suits Gareth Southgate a little bit in the sense of, Coming up against the Spanish, you're not going to get everybody going, why haven't we got more of the ball? Why aren't we creating chance after chance? There's going to be a kind of acceptance that it isn't all going to be one-way traffic, which wasn't the case for England against Slovakia, against Switzerland, and even against the Dutch, because this is not a Dutch side of years gone by. You'd think England have already won it, um, judging by the noise behind us. But what do you think about this game? Do you fancy Spain to get on top? Do you think England have the weaponry to deal with this team? Apparently it's coming home. Yeah, it's coming home based on <laughs> based on what we can hear. Um, I think if England are smart enough, they should let the ball to to Spain and be like a, a, a weapon on um, on counter attacks because France were the most dangerous when they did that. And I think with the quality of the of this England squad, with the the pace of uh, players like Saka with the creativity of players like Bellingham and Foden, I think this England squad can be a threat if they leave the ball to, to Spain. But be careful. You need to be very, very tidy in defence and mainly in that final third um, uh, mid, midfield uh, position, you know, um, when you, you need to, to be very careful to, um, to both um, Rodri and Olmo. I think that's the, the two main force. Danny almost been one of the best players yeah. in the tournament, obviously making big Not spoken packs. enough. Yeah, and he wasn't even starting enough. as well. Yeah. You know, he came into the side because of an injury against Germany early on in the game. And look yeah. at the impact. I mean, look, what England have to do as well, when they do get the ball, they have to use it well. Because, you know, you know how Spain have played football over the years. I'd argue their, their football's a bit different to when they were, they were winning tournaments like a good 10, 15 years ago or whatever it was. But... They have that DNA within them. I think just this Spain team has developed in a sense and they have more of a like direct threat nowadays with their wingers. Like you talk about Williams and Yamal. For me, it feels like they have a punch in attack. Yeah, absolutely. Which and I enjoy years, watching yeah. this Spain team a lot more than those teams. I've watched Spain for years and thought all the build-up is brilliant, but then where's that final punch? And another player that's really important in this, by the way, that hasn't got the credit he deserves at this tournament is Alvaro Morata. Because we talk about the wingers, the spaces that they're getting into, but that is coming from his ability to drop deep, his ability to open corridors, his hold-up play. So he's been fantastic as well. Just finally, um, we are going to bring you more content around the Euros, so don't worry. There's loads of videos to come over the next few days. But you said that you think that England are going to have to sit off a little bit and let Spain have the ball. We think that Spain are probably going to play with a high line. So would there be a temptation for you guys to maybe play a striker who is better suited to running in behind, i.e. the man of the moment, He's Ollie Watkins. never going to do it. Never, ever, ever in a million years well, is he going to drop Harry Gareth Kane in a final. Southgate <laughs> wouldn't do it, but would you guys yeah, do it? Yeah, I, I would definitely do it because I, I don't think Kane has been close enough to the box. And when you play this kind of teams, you need to be very fast and to go into the box as soon as you can. And I think Oli Watkins has shown this season that he was suited to play this kind of football uh, under Unai Emery. And with the pace of someone like Leon Bailey, for example, uh, and it shown, it showed its efficiency. So I think, I think I would do it, but maybe I'm biased. <laughs> yeah, Harry, maybe it's time. All competition long, they've been calling for it. Maybe it's time for Anthony Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> that one player on the left side who can get get forward and uh you know have that threat he, he's not going to drop harry kane no nah, he's not, not going to pick anthony gordon either let's be real he's going to keep it exactly the same maybe change the formation a little bit in terms of how they defend we've seen saka dropping in like really deep to uh, to form a, something of a back five he might he might bring luke shaw in that, that's the only thing yeah we'll, i'm sure we'll we'll look ahead to this in a little bit more depth as well I don't think you can drop Harry Kane in this game. Not, Just, and you might think, Arsenal fan, of course he wants Harry Kane out of the team. No. As good as Ollie Watkins was in that moment the other night, 
He's not Harry Kane. No, 100%. He's not England's all-time leading goal scorer. He's not the team's captain. He's not the team's leader. I just think it would be too too bold a call. Let us know uh, what you think in the comments section as well. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Plenty more content coming your way over the next few days. Follow the guys on their social as well. The links are in the description below. And we'll be back very, very soon from Berlin here in Germany. Thanks for watching.